Hello and welcome everybody. As the Halloween season approaches, I thought it'd be nice to do something that's just pure fun. No horror to it at all, it's just funny. It's just a good, uh, warm, sort of positive feeling, especially because personally, I don't know about you, but I get kind of anxious during the autumn seasons. My anxiety just kind of peaks in, and I feel I just need some positive stuff in my life from time to time. And when I need positivity, and something that's just going to make me laugh, something very wholesome, I almost always go to the old, classic, silent films of Buster Keaton. Now, I'm sure some of you youngians and, uh, uh, whippersnappers, you probably don't know that name, but Buster Keaton was a famous comedian of the silent era. You're probably more familiar with Charlie Chaplin, but I like Buster a little bit better. <laughs> She's that bottle cap over top of the lock. What a clever little bit. A lot of Buster's comedy was built on the idea of sight gags and practical gags and a lot, a lot, lot, lot of physical stunt work. The bank cashier and his band of counterfeiters have a strong reason for making people believe this house is haunted. It's to keep people out. That's where they're running their counterfeiting ring. In Buster, um, something that he did so well was establishing story in very, very few, just a very, very few, uh, dialogue cards. And he, of course, he would establish big set pieces, the main set piece of his comedy. Uh, he would establish it very clearly, as you can see, so the audience is never confused, which is something that later on, uh, the films of, of people like Alfred Hitchcock, uh, Hitchcock often worried about the audience becoming confused. He wanted to make sure it was very clear for the audience, and, uh, Buster does that, I think, really, really well. And he does it with no dialogue. Um, so you may find, like, I think the most dialogue cards he ever used was something like 50 dialogue cards in a feature. And this is one of his short films. So you can see he, she's saying, oh, please, I really need the money. He says the, the, time, <laughs> the time lock on the safe won't, won't open until 9 o'clock. And so, of course, even though that clock is completely independent of the safe, what does he do? He goes and decides, well, I'm just going to turn the clock forward, right? And of course it works, for, because the world of Buster Keaton was really kind of a, a cartoony world. If you notice also something a little bit funny about that that, that you might have missed, is he opens the glass facing on the clock, then reaches through it, because there was no glass there. <laughs> I love that. Uh, that's a cute little romantic moment. Hope you saw that. <laughs> although it's a small bank, it has a president. And although he is a small man, he has a daughter. <laughs> and this is another great thing. is He didn't just use the dialogue cards for exposition. He would try to throw in little verbal jokes in there as well. And that is really fun. That's a great... I uh, see, look, burglar-proof time lock... Uh, obviously, it's only burglar-proof until you have a stool and can get up and turn the clock around. <laughs> you can trick the safe. The safe doesn't know the difference. I wonder who put counterfeit money in the bank. I will ask the police. He goes, oh, the police, the police. <laughs> and take that, he immediately stuffs the counterfeit money in his pocket. And again, this is just keeping everything very clear so the audience doesn't get confused. Uh, because we want to make sure that the audience is entirely in on the gag. They have to follow all of this nonsense as it gets progressively more complicated and of course more funny. Check this out. This is the beginning of a great gag. That, I mean, it runs for a good half of the running time. He accidentally sticks his hand in glue and of course he doesn't have the good sense to just stop counting the money and so he spills the glue over everything and now he's trying to clean it up but of course he's just making matters worse. I really love this. It works so well because of course, as a lot of people have said before me, comedy is a in a large part about suffering. But it has to be in a way, you know, that the person is suffering emotionally. If they're most, uh, suffering physically, it has to be, in the case of slapstick, which is, you know, physical comedy, really, uh, it has to be something that they recover from very, very quickly. The difference between tragedy and comedy really is a, a very fine line in that the reaction has to be as if the embarrassment or the pain is legitimate, but at the same time, uh, it can't be something 
that is so uh, so damaging to the character that they don't recover from it far quicker than a normal human being would. That's part of the fun of comedy. Uh, because it gives us a release, because of course, in real life, this would get, you know, this would not only get you fired, but you would be freaking out, and of course what makes this... <laughs> look at their little dance! <laughs> Do the money dance, guys! Of course, what makes this so funny is that Buster is just kind of takes all of this as a mild annoyance. Even though, I mean, this is job-ending territory that he is in. We're actually coming up on one of my favorite gags here. See, he, the, the bank teller there, he just sat down in glue. And of course, Buster can just cut his, a huge chunk of his hair out. It doesn't bother him. Of course, why wouldn't it? Because... Of course, as with all slapstick, he recovers very quickly from it. But check this out. So the bank teller sat in glue, and now he's stuck to the ground, right? So Buster does the most logical thing he can think of, right? Get boiling water to pour on this poor man! <laughs> but this is how they get around the suffering, right? Of course, oh, it's, ah, it's, it burns, you know? So he wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to do that too much, because it's going to be too much. So what does he do? He just knocks the guy out. Now he can't feel the pain. And of course, he's still pouring boiling water down this guy's crotch, but of course, he gets him loose from the glue. And when he wakes him up, watch, this guy does not even react. He doesn't even act like there's still boiling water on him. He's <laughs> like, oh, thank you for burning the hell out of my crotch. Thanks for that. Oh, this is a great little bit as well. It just goes straight from one gag to the next. And you could tell all of this has been thought out because the story never actually stops for this to keep going, right? There, I mean, there, obviously, there's not a lot of story to it. It is very much gag to gag to gag. But those gags have to... Uh, they have to lead naturally one to the uh, to the next um, for the story to progress at all. Otherwise, they could just get lost in all these sight gags. I think I was talking over it, but I like that Buster actually knocks himself on the head so that he can pour boiling water on his hand and it doesn't hurt, which is a really clever move. And, of course... This is this is great. That classic, like, oh, the lady faints, and that guy's like, oh, no, my, my britches are showing. <laughs> and, of course, because things can only go from bad to worse, these guys come in and decide to rob the bank at the most inconvenient time. Of course, you saw the uh, the uh, counterfeit leader there it just directed the guys to go in and rob the bank, but, I mean, I don't think he could possibly imagine how badly this is going to go. <laughs> See, Buster, is, he's such a straight man to all of the craziness going on around him that it's even funnier that, you know, he's just trying to act like a typical straight guy character by just... <laughs> wow, I mean, what physicality? Can you imagine throwing yourself on the ground like that? I mean, that would hurt really bad. And there's no mats underneath him or anything. It's all done in a wide shot, so you can see he is hitting the ground and hitting it hard. And that's part of the fun of it. Of course, he just rips his pockets out, because this is a cartoon reality, so literally anything can happen. Of course, that would, that would like, you know, probably rip a huge hole in the sides of his pants as well, but no, his pockets just come very cleanly out. <laughs> this is just so hysterical. And, I mean, they just left the guns laying right there on the counter. But this is a great misunderstanding. Watch this. Watch how funny this is. He crawls to the other side to see what's going on. The bank um, president grabs his gun to come out. And when he comes out, it looks like Buster's robbing the bank. That's brilliant. And of course, you just saw the counterfeiter. He pulled the money, the fake money, out of his own pocket and stuffed it down into Buster's as he pretended to pull it out. Um, and, and because the movie established that visually very clearly, we weren't lost or wondering what exactly was happening there. <laughs> now watch this. He stuck. To, <laughs> he stuck to the bank vault. How funny! And of course, nobody ever finds him. That night, the Daredevil Opera Company was executing Faust, and he deserved it. <laughs> what great wordplay! There was executing Faust, which of course, you know, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence by explaining that joke to you. I. <laughs> I just have this habit of immediately wanting to explain everything that I, I like. <laughs> it's actually what convinced me to start doing videos like this. <laughs> now, and this is funny, too, because, you know, a lot of comedies, even now, uh, you know, this is part of the reason why chick flicks fail so much. They're always afraid to show women suffering. Um, and suffering is a part of comedy. You just can't avoid it. And so it's really funny to see that 
house just fall right on that woman. And look at it, he was consulting with his wife or whoever that woman was next to him. Like, should I go ahead and throw this cabbage? Yeah, I'm gonna throw it. I'm gonna nail this guy. No, please don't throw! Oh, no! <laughs> and of course they run out to escape. <laughs> this angry mob, because this is this is the most cartoony world imaginable. So of course, rather than just you know <laughs> have this theater company, oh look, he fell asleep standing up. That's so funny. And even the even they know that they can trick the bank vault by just turning <laughs> the clock. And Buster, of course, gets away through the logic again of Mary Melodies because this is not the real world we're living in. But check this out! Look at this! Uh, <laughs> the actors are being chased by an angry mob. How funny is that? Like, it's not just that the play was bad. It was so insultingly bad that we want to lynch these people for it. <laughs> and it just happens that not only Buster, <laughs> that guy, don't go in there, that house is haunted! Not one of them, not one of them questions the superstition of whether or not this place is haunted. <laughs> it's ghost world that we live in. Uh, and of course we've established, uh, you know, that these counterfeiters are acting like ghosts. They want people to believe this place is haunted. So of course, they're running around in the bed sheets. But we also know that the Shakespeare Company... Um, or sorry, the Daredevil Theater Company, you know, <laughs> he's flapping his wings like a bird. Uh, they kn they know um, that they're gonna, you know, they're gonna get killed by this mob, so they have to escape and run into the haunted house too. So that's pretty pretty funny how everybody just happens to end up at this one location. Come on, guys, get your bed sheets on. We want to make sure that there's no doubt that we are clansmen when people come in this building. <laughs> That's a great, a great gag. The little fella from the bank is upstairs. What do we do, boss? What do we do? Ah, go and go on, get your bed sheets. Get up there. <laughs> There's the theater company again, and of course, as I said, they all they all escape, just happen to escape into the same ha quote unquote haunted building. And this leads to a really funny misunderstanding where Buster actually thinks that one of these guys is Satan. I <laughs> see that he looks over and he's, oh, Satan, ah, and he faints. And he's like, where, what? <laughs> I love the music in old silent films. Uh, there's just something really beautiful about it. Oh my gosh, what what a great gag, because re remember, we, sh we set that up. Again, setting all this up very clearly, either through gags that then become secondary gags, where they we pay off the establishment of the first gag, or um, through, you know... Uh, through through just seeing a gag very well established at the beginning like it was with the staircase so that and, and Buster's gonna frequently be fall, falling up and down those staircases that staircase and you know that's gonna be the case um, but it actually sets up for a brilliant payoff at the end where he has he gets knocked out and has a dream that really pays off exactly oh <laughs> exactly the way these staircases the staircase should be paid off. Oh, this? He's like trying to be like, oh, make sure it's gonna it's gonna hold me. Okay, we're, ah, <laughs> it's great. And and there's several times that we see that staircase move where, um, you're not entirely sure. Like, oh, is he gonna make it up or down this time? And sometimes he makes it right to the end, and it still gets him. It's it's great. <laughs> Poor Buster. He plays everything so straight. He's a little bit... Actually, um, one of the reasons I think I've always loved Leslie Nielsen in comedies is uh, that he, he does not play it like a comedy. He does a lot of pratfalls and big physical falls, but that face is always deadpan straight. You never get an idea that he realizes he's in a comedy. And watch this. Watch how clever this is. Of course, he jumps trying to jump on the devil, but then... Of course, the devil character leaves his cape behind, so Buster just thinks that the guy has evaporated out from under him. How clever is that? And <laughs> it's brilliant! Um, you know, he holds it up, and from his point of view, we understand that... Oh, look at that! <laughs> oh, I love jokes like that. I just love stuff like that. It's so funny. 
these skeleton guys are legitimately creepy, and if you look at them, you can see they have body paint on them. This is a fantastic gag. I do not know, in the logic of this story, how this gag was supposed to work, unless these skeletons were real ghosts. That was really good. I mean, if you watched closely for it, you could have seen the jump cut, but it's it's very close to flawless. It's so well done. I mean, my gosh, what what a great, great gag. <laughs> so, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, look at these skeletons. Look how good they look. I mean, that is really fantastic. And you can imagine the hours of makeup it took to get them in those outfits. Or, sorry, in that makeup, rather. Oh, this is a great gag, too. I think you, you can... I mean, you can definitely tell how it's done, but I mean, like... <laughs> oh, wow. And, of course, the fact that all of this is supposed to be fake, it excuses the fact that it doesn't look real. It, and it kind of makes sense. Oh, man, what a badass woman. Good job. Check this out. Check this out. And, obviously, that's like a child. I mean, that's that's got to be like a child or, or a, a small woman, because there is no way that that is supposed to be any of the guys we saw earlier. Oh, <laughs> face first. Wow, and he handles it all with such grace, and he just keep, gets up and keeps going. Fall after fall. Look at that. And Buster Keaton actually had a rule about this. It was, we get a gag right the first time, or we cut it out. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Check this out. Look at that rug. And that's great. It blended in so well that... Until it starts moving, you don't realize that it's there, and it makes the gag all the funnier. <laughs> this, this guy is so straight-faced, and he just lets him run himself ragged. <laughs> so look at this. He catches his cape on fire, so it makes it look like... He is actually the devil with like the smokes of like the flames of hell following him. And of course it scares these guys away. <laughs> because of course it does. That's hilarious. And of course, through just a, a pure misunderstanding, through just a pure coincidence, Buster looks at oh, look at what a great expression. And he's like, oh, these guys are all fake. I mean, of course the audience realized that long ago, but Buster is just the, you know, just a little bit dim-witted enough to be able to fall for it. So check this out. Look, look at this. <laughs> oh, that's great. I have to imagine that this is where the Scooby-Doo coming in and out of doors gag, I have to imagine this is where it came from. And even though it is a different gag, the setup, even the camera angle is very, very similar to Scooby-Doo. And Buster just, he throws a million gags at you, one after the, and ne the next, and, and of course, you know, one of the great things about them is, because there's so many, if any of them don't land or don't make you laugh, well, you just move on to the next one so quickly that that's okay. Watch. <laughs> right at the end, he thought he made it. Uh, you know, right at the, um... Right to the end, he's just throwing gag after gag at you, and if you don't find one of them funny, my gosh, he's just trying such a variety of gags. Oh, this is one of my very favorites ever. Watch this. <laughs> he couldn't figure out which hand to smack him with, so he just throws it up in the air and positions his head under it. What a great gag. And, of course, the bank, uh, the bank president ends up, just by pure happenstance, stepping on that, and so we end up with everybody here, you know saying, oh, we're gonna hold you hostage, and, and it, you know, we got away with our counterfeiting scheme, but Buster has the upper hand on him, and so Buster clears his name right here, you know, because they see who did it now, there's, yeah, there's really no need to, <laughs> there's really no need for Buster to be in trouble, which is great, all of this had to lead naturally to this point in time, now watch this, she, okay, so she felt his heart, oh, he's alive, thank God, but of course, now that we know he's alive, we can find it funny that in his dream, he thinks he's going to heaven. And I think, uh, what's great about this is, of course, there's a stairway to heaven, right? That is, uh, a concept as old as the concept of stairs, right? As old as the concept of heaven. Okay, so it just about takes your mind off of what they're setting up to do. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, St. Peter with the lamest looking wig ever. Watch. Here we go. <laughs> so that staircase gag has been paying up, uh, building up to pay off this whole time to a sliding board right to hell. And just watch how casual the devil is. He's like, oh, got one. Yep. All right. Come on, Mr. Keaton, let's get your, uh, let's get your paperwork ready. <laughs> and look, this guy is stabbing him with a lit pitchfork, or a lit trident. Which leads, of course, to <laughs> Buster having his butt burned. So he lifts up. It's like, oh, goodness, so let me tell you about the dream I had. And you were there, and you were there. <laughs> uh, so that was The Haunted House, starring Buster Keaton. And I hope you enjoy that as much as I do. Man, Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin, the silent films in general, we, I, I feel like we're forgetting about them. And I, I hope that soon we see a revival, you know, like, sort of like a silent film hipsters, you know, you know people going back and, and realizing how great these movies were, because they were, I mean, they were really great. I'd love to say they were ahead of their time, but they gave birth to everything that we have now, so they weren't ahead of their time. They were just the father of everything we have. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I always enjoy it. And uh, maybe we'll check out some more films by Buster Keaton in the future on this channel. So, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, happy Halloween, and we'll be doing some more horror stuff and some more scary stuff and haunted houses before October 31st. I can't believe it's almost here. My gosh, this month has flown by. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.